My name is Sue Teal. I was the Associate Dean and Director of Education Extension at the University of California, Riverside, known as UCR, for 32 years and am an academic emeritus at UCR. I'm going to be discussing today information on the theory of multiple intelligences and applications for teaching and learning. In addition, I'll be presenting some research findings from the Teal Inventory for Multiple Intelligence, better known as the TIMI, a forced choice pictorial inventory I created, which has been used both nationally and in over 40 countries. I have written three books about the theory of multiple intelligence and created a spatial pictorial inventory. The first book was called The Multiple Intelligence School, A Place for All Students to Learn. The second book, Rainbows of Intelligence, Exploring How Students Learn. And the third book, Overcoming Barricades to Reading, A Multiple Intelligence Approach. My research for over 20 years has been based on professor from Harvard, Howard Gardner's book, Frames of Mind, in which he outlined the theory of multiple intelligence and originally stated seven different ways individuals process information. Linguistic, logical mathematical, spatial, musical, bodily kinesthetic, intrapersonal, and interpersonal. I have made over 500 presentations, both nationally and internationally, to educators on the theory of multiple intelligences and ways to integrate the theory into classrooms from preschool, elementary, middle, and high school, even to the college level. I believe in the statement, all individuals can learn and succeed, but not in the same way and not on the same day. Everyone learns in a highly personal, individualized way. No two individuals have the same profile of intelligence and do not process information in the same way. I believe that students have the capacity to learn and achieve, but may need to learn in different ways. They can succeed if the process of learning is effectively designed or adapted to meet their needs. All students should be taught through methods that allow them to understand the information being presented. If they do not understand what is being taught, they may not be able to comprehend and retain that information. There's a very important quote that states, it's not how smart you are, but how are you smart? It is so important that we apply that statement in education for us to see how smart each student is in their own way. When we can do that, we discover the individual and unique ways each student learns. Now let's examine each of the characteristics of the seven intelligences. As I describe them, think about yourself and which of the characteristics of each of the intelligences best describes you. We'll start with linguistic intelligence. Do you like to read and write? Are you a good speller? Can you process information through listening? Do you like the word processor part of the computer? Do you have a good memory for names, dates, places, and trivia? Do you like speaking to groups? Methods that work well with students who are strong linguistically are word games, lectures, storytelling, reading aloud, and reading, writing, spelling, and listening exercises. Now let's look at the characteristics for logical mathematical intelligence. Are you able to compute math problems quickly? Do you analyze patterns, categories, and relationships? Do you like doing databases, spreadsheets, and problem solving on the computer? Do you group and order data and analyze, interpret, and make predictions? That's better known as the scientific method. Instructional methods for teaching students whose dominant intelligence is logical mathematical are using charts, diagrams, and lists, demonstrating patterns and relationships, providing questioning strategies, and showing students how to outline and categorize information. Let's move on to spatial intelligences. Do you think in images and pictures? Can you see clear visual images when thinking about something? Do you enjoy movies, slides, graphics, and photographs? Do you easily read maps, charts, and diagrams? Do you like to participate in different types of art activities? Are you able to draw accurate pictures of people and things? 
Teaching methods that work well with students who are strong spatially are to use pictures, slides, posters, graphics, and movies that apply to the content being taught, as well as colors to represent different parts of speech, words, letters, or math symbols. A variety of art activities will actively engage spatial learners in the learning process. I want to give you an idea for assisting spatial students in learning how to spell, and that is to have them draw their own pictures of the words they must spell. Now please understand that it has to be their own picture. Be sure they know the correct spelling of the word when you begin this activity. Have them write the word many times within and around their picture. When they say the word, they can see the picture they have drawn and the correct spelling is in and around their picture, so they know how to spell the word. This process encodes the correct spelling word into long-term memory into their brain. The next slide we're going to show you demonstrates how a fourth grade student was able to correctly spell the word rocket since the word surrounded the picture she had drawn in was circled. Notice also that she did know how to spell moon, sun, and star, and had drawn pictures of these three words. So let's move on to musical intelligence. What are the characteristics of musical intelligence? Do you enjoy music and or play a musical instrument? Do you like to sing songs? Do you tap or hum rhythms? Can you hear sounds in the environment? Do you like to listen to music when studying, working, or being creative? Methods that assist musical intelligence students are chants, poetry like limericks, moving rhythmically or clapping, or snapping fingers to rhythm, and playing music that matches the curriculum. Let's move on now to bodily kinesthetic intelligence. If you are bodily kinesthetic, you need to move, tap, or fidget while sitting. You learn best by being allowed to stand, move around, touch, or act things out. You like to participate in sports and or physical activities. You enjoy doing skills that use your hands, like woodworking, sewing, cooking, or carving. So what are some teaching methods that assist bodily kinesthetic intelligence students? Hands-on active learning activities? Games? Simulations? Manipulatives? action-packed stories and laboratory experiences. You're now going to view a slide with a cartoon of a man sitting in a box with a heading that says, I'm okay, you're okay, now go away. That slide represents a characteristic of intrapersonal intelligence. When you see the slide, ask yourself if you have ever felt like that. Characteristics of intrapersonal intelligence are analyze feelings, strengths, and weaknesses. Do you like to be alone to pursue personal interests, hobbies, or projects? Do you prefer your own private inner world? Are you independent, strong-willed, and self-directed? Do you sometimes have strong opinions when controversial subjects are being discussed? Now let's look at interpersonal intelligence. Do you enjoy interacting with many people and participating in collaborative group work? Do you have friends in different settings like work, school, church, or at home? Do you like to organize, communicate, and sometimes manipulate social settings to ensure harmony because you like harmony? Do you serve as a family mediator when disputes arise? Can you respond to the moods and temperaments of others? Let's move away a little bit from multiple intelligence. I'd like to present now some of the research findings from the instrument I created called the Teal Inventory for Multiple Intelligence, commonly known as the Timmy. It's a forced choice pictorial inventory that contains pictures of pandas representing characteristics of each of the seven intelligences. Individuals select one of two choices. The Timmy is one way to quickly identify the more and less dominant intelligence individual possess the day they take the inventory. It has established reliability and validity and is listed in Test and Print, the Burroughs Mental Measurement Yearbook series. 
The Timmy has been used in schools throughout the United States in over 40 countries. Believe it or not, it can be used for individuals aged 3 to 100. The next slide shows an example of the first page of the Timmy. Notice that there's two pictures of pandas, and you can pick one of those two pictures. The Timmy was administered to over 6,000 preschool, 12th grade students in four states and students in five other countries. The schools range from all white rural schools in Kentucky to primarily minority urban schools in California, Arizona, and Nevada. The next slide you will see does not show the scores of all the individual grade levels, but is categorized as primary, upper elementary, middle, and high school levels. The Timmy results indicated that students at the primary grades scored higher in linguistic and logical mathematical intelligence than the other grade levels. Spatial and bodily kinesthetic intelligence scored the highest scores at both middle and high school levels. Intrapersonal intelligence scored the highest at kindergarten and first grade levels and would you believe at the 12th grade level. Interpersonal intelligence scored the highest at the middle and high school levels. It is interesting to note that at the first grade level in both the United States and five other countries, linguistic intelligence scored the highest in all the studies. This could indicate that processing linguistically at the first grade level may have more commonality with the student's development than the different languages spoken or ethnicity. My research has indicated that theory of multiple intelligence, when applied to instructional strategies and assessment measures, reveal that every student has unique talents and abilities and can succeed in school if, and only if, they are taught and assessed in methods that reach the many diverse ways they learn. Educators must work to create opportunities to unleash the creative potential of all students, open as many windows to learning as possible, and provide many different instructional and assessment methods that enable every student to succeed. Thank you very much for viewing this video and providing me with an opportunity to share with you how we can ensure that every student can experience successes in the schooling environment. The following slides provide you with a short biography of my professional career and include two email addresses of how you can contact me if you would like to further discuss my materials or have me conduct a workshop at your location.